Oh, but it's not. Check it out because when I pull this out, oh, there's a little hidden blade inside. Hello everyone, it's me, Bo Shemesu. Today I am coming to you with what appears to be a beautiful origami envelope. Now, normally I don't really mention the packaging unless it is noteworthy. Yes, this would be a fantastic gift, but wait, nothing is actually on this card right now. That's because it's hidden right here. Yes, this is a typically a lady's knife, but I'm just gonna wear it just to demonstrate the size and the actual um, uh, proportions of this. It kind of looks like a dog tag. Uh, the chain itself is actually adjustable from between 20 and 24 inches. The end of the chain, uh, it, there's this tiny little dog tag. You can see that the uh, the logo is on there, which is very cute. But you may be like, oh, Bo, that, that's a very nice necklace. But let's be honest, it's, it's kind of boring. Oh, but it's not. Check it out because when I pull this out, Oh, there's a little hidden blade inside. Now this particular blade uh, remains completely hidden and even the little dimples perfectly align in such a way that you can't quite tell that there is something hidden in there. And it is uh, pretty secure with this magnet right there. It doesn't actually like slip out. And so if you're like doing jumping jacks or running along, it's not gonna fall out and stab your foot. Um, it is fairly sharp, but you can kind of hold it like this. Do not hold it actually between your fingers like this. <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, what, what's that guy, Wolverine. Uh, but this would suffice very, very nicely in opening up an Amazon package, not for self-defense. Now, a quick word uh, as I talk briefly about the style of this karambit style blade. This is actually modeled after this kind of blade right here. This is kind of the hawk bill or a uh, hawk claw, um, eagle claw. And uh, this the, the bill of this eagle is very, very interesting because there's it's it's more for offensive rather defensive uh, but this got an incredible amount of piercing power in this uh, i can't actually do a lot of tricks with this you can look up on youtube i'm not gonna cut myself on camera but you can see on a little miniature type level that's what it is modeled after see even even the little texture up here is the same right there now what's so interesting about these blades is that this is typically a Filipino style fighting knife, not the little guy, but this style right here. But you can also go over to Nepal and you can see the same style being exemplified over there. This is called a Gorka knife. I actually did get it in Nepal. Uh, and this has a lot of weight on the front end and it's great for, boy, in Nepal, they use this for everything from self-defense, uh, in the military, they chop the heads off of chickens, they use this in the kitchen, they use this for everything. So the Gorka knife is extremely versatile. Uh, but it doesn't stop just in Nepal because this little guy I got in Burkina Faso. And uh, this is more so for agricultural uses, not necessarily uh, self-defense. Uh, it, it is, of course, the same kind of style, that, that curved type style right there. And as you can see, at the very top, the middle right here, it is a small little magnet along with a screw on there. That does not actually, not actually come on the blade itself, but this I actually screw into the wall so that I can mount this and show people as it's hung on the wall. Isn't that cool? Now, last fun little thing is this blade right here, which we are now going all across the globe over to um, uh, uh, Sierra Leone. So this guy I got on TY Island, which is south of Sierra Leone. And this, you can also see a very, very similar type curve to it sort of in that direction. Uh, the handle is made out of wood. You'll notice that there's a bit of a hook on the end. That's because it's more so jungle type in Southern Sierra Leone. So as they're walking through the trees, they can kind of reach up like this and cut some vines very easily. As opposed to going more north in Sierra Leone, West Africa, you'll get more of the curved uh, scimitar looking style blades, uh, which are really iconic in uh, Islamic type, um, you know, uh, lore and stories and, and things of that kind. So it's really interesting culturally how each of these these weapons uh, speak to the culture. And I think this speaks to our culture quite nicely because 
it, it's not gonna really hurt anybody. You're not gonna go and try to stab somebody with a one inch blade, but it, it's very, very practical. It's utilitarian. It's a knife that you can very easily take with you wherever you go. And it blends in in such a way that uh, it will go with pretty much any outfit if you're a lady. So let's say you're wearing something from Lulu Row, or let's say that you are going out on a nice fancy date. Uh, you can wear it pretty much anywhere. Uh, the only thing that I would say, the downside to this, is that when you pull it out like this, uh, if you were to turn it in this direction, it still actually goes in, but if you look very, very carefully, the little dimples don't quite line up. So it only lines up in one direction. So that's, that's pretty much the only uh, gripe, so to speak, I have about this thing. Um, if both sides had, had uh, similar type dimples and texture on them, then I would be okay with that. But then again, the texture on there is a hammered type texture. So it, it's supposed to kind of have a, a distressed type look to it. So if that makes sense, I hope that this helps in determining whether or not the knife list is right for you or a right gift for someone. And also I hope that a little bit of, you know, fascinating cultural tidbits about different knives all over the world are, are kind of modeled and styled after this uh, that curve right there on the knife list. My name is Bo Chevis. I look forward to testing, demonstrating, and reviewing some fantastic, amazing products all across the internet for your benefit.